So in preparation to retrobrite the keyboard, I noticed it had those stickers on there from a symphony from Lotus or something like that. They had those little, little stickers, little guides for the software, whatever. They're on the key, they're on the keys, and they're going to have to go if we're going to retrobrite it. Otherwise, we'll level to not have good coverage, and they'll probably won't survive the process anyway. So off they come so I set my little hot air gun at uh, about 150 degrees and set about warming them up and peeling them off so I suppose if we got us a good picture of the keyboard we might be ready to go ahead and start retro brighting these nasty looking keys at least soaking the keycaps overnight put some of these tools away All right, we got a bowl, we got a bag, and we got a uh, keyboard cap puller. They all seem to have this little dome thing here, this little seal. Probably don't want to wash that. At any rate, I'm going to put it in the baggie. So this is important. You put the space bar back on. The wider part goes to the towards the user. Towards the outside of the keyboard. Okay. It's always a point of confusion. Alright. So something of a disgusting mess here. I don't want to use any chemicals because I don't want anything to eat the foam that holds the keys. It makes the, uh, the keys work. And ideally, I'll hit it with some alcohol, but I'm afraid that would eat the pads, and I don't want any part of that. I suppose I could use a Q-tip. All right, it's going to have to come apart to get those stabilizer bars out of there. Okay, the big screw went right here by where it says S100, between S100 and S106. Maybe we can just pop those back in and that'd be the end of it, huh? Just gonna take this and just brush it off. I was concerned that we might have some pieces of the cable, the metal pieces, that could cause shorts. Doesn't seem to be the case. I think I'm gonna go ahead and clean this a little bit with some alcohol away from this other stuff. Okay. All right, so this is the method I use. I use the uh, Superstar 40V cream peroxide developer. I just pour it in a little bowl and paint it on the keys. I'm going to follow this up with my reflective
cardboard box that I lined with aluminum foil and I have a hole cut in it and I have a UV light that shines through there and illuminates the box and so these keys will be sitting in the box for about 15 hours I checked it every few hours kind of massage the cellophane make sure that it wasn't drying up or over collecting in one area or something like that and then set them over there to make sure that the light could still get on them and here are the results so once the keycaps came out of the box I washed them again with some more dish soap and water rinsed them all off real well and dried them again with the neatest hair dryer after looking at them the inside of the caps and the outside of the caps were still a little bit different the outside was just a little bit darker but I would say while not a hundred percent restored I'd say I'd put it at around 90 percent maybe a little more so pretty successful as these things go and uh, the process I decided to follow as we go forward here is I got the 303 spray to provide some UV protection to the to the caps and I put that on the caps and also on the little rubber domes just to kind of give them some refreshment. Anyway, cue the montage. <laughs> Hey, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Uh, the next step we're going to have to do, though, is we're going to have to pop the circuit board back off of the uh, keyboard there, which means taking out the 80,000 screws so we can move it out of the way to get access to the stabilizer bars to reconnect them to the keys.
All right, with our keyboard ready for use, we can set about the task of getting these panels off of the computer so that we can get access to the I.O. card and the power source, which we will use to connect the GoTech. And we'll just see if we may, maybe we can get this thing to boot. What was it? Part two. We replaced the CMOS battery, so if we can get the setup disk to boot, we should be able to make some settings, and they should uh, be retained by the CMOS, which would mean that we won't have to run that every time we use the machine. So, there you got true screws on the side that hold that cage in. There, let me show you. So we got to take these two screws out right here. Now, of course, there's a Torx bit. Yeah, I want you to take that top cover off and the two screws from the side. It should wiggle right out of there. Clear the electrical connectors real quick. Little wiggling, and out she'll come. There it is. So there's our massive 20 megabyte hard drive. Spoiler alert, we're going to find out later that that doesn't work. But it's okay because we have an IDE to CF adapter. All right, with the drives out of the way, we can go ahead and roll her over and open up her belly so we can access the keyboard connector and reconnect our keyboard. There we go. We'll just loosen these screws here on the side Got to get this one. That one there just gets loosened. Uh, looks like that battery access panel where you'd also access the memory expansion will also have to come off. This unit is not equipped with the memory expansion board from uh, compact there. All right, covers off. Looking at the connector there, there's three witness marks on one side of it that are not there on the other. And you match it up to some lines inside the connector. It becomes pretty obvious which way it goes in. All righty, let's flip her back right side up. Look at that fancy, pretty keyboard. So here I'm over, over here trying to hook up the universal floppy cable that I got from Amazon. It's pretty neat. It's got the modern day floppy style and also the edge connectors on it. It does have a twist in the cable, which works just fine for PC and PC compatibles. But Maybe not so much for some other applications you might try to use it for. At any rate, so we'll go before the twist just to keep things simple. As the GoTech is already set up with the jumpers to be disk zero. Want to make sure you line up that red line on that floppy cable closest to your power connector on the GoTech there. All right, now for the power. The other end of that connector plugs in on the motherboard. In this part, I was trying to load the setup disk, and I was having some difficulty because of a couple things. By default, I think it defaulted to only wanting to read 360K disks. And another issue I was having was I had named disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, whatever. But the GoTech started counting from zero and it took me a while to figure that out. So despite what you might have named it, it just goes to the first file in the, you know, that it finds in the file there and calls it zero. So if you've named it disk 1, it makes no difference. So that was throwing me off too. So there was a bit of a learning curve. Yeah, so here 
I'm setting the floppy disk drive for drive A and what I should have selected here was 1.44 megabyte 3.5 because that's what the GoTech technically identifies itself as but for some reason I just kept going through and choosing the wrong thing sometime off camera I eventually got it set right as I found in the next clip but I never did see actually where I did that or discovered that. But at any rate, 1.44 meg, 3.5 inch floppy would be the right setting for the GoTech. I went ahead and ran some diagnostic tests. The test came out about as expected. We already knew we had an error in the memory. And our fixed disk didn't show up for the party at all so as I explained earlier uh, that did not make the, the cut so this just kind of verified it so as I think I explained before maybe not misadventure queen works from home now so she had a session to do she's a licensed professional counselor and of course it would not be proper for anybody to be in the room while she's doing the session with a client so I had to bug out so I headed outside to do uh, what Compaq failed to do and that was to spray some sexy on this machine I had painted the face of the floppy disk drive and the button. Or did I forget to do the button? I think I had to run out and do the button again later. So, put the face back on the floppy disk drive and then put it back in the cage. It's obvious that, that the cage is a little wider than the GoTech itself. It's going to require some uh, spacers and whatnot to get it right but for now we're just trying to get it in the machine to kind of get a visual of what it's going to look like and come up with a plan to get it properly spaced in the uh, in the front bezel so that you know everything shows like it should so while I managed to film all this fascinating stuff here putting screws in the adapter for the GoTech I managed to fail to record the installation of the uh, IDE to CF card adapter. But at any rate, there wasn't much to it. You just take the locking plate off of one of the expansion ports and install the uh, IDE to CF adapter. And then attach the IDE cable to the I.O. board. Still would have been nice to have shown it at any rate here's the software setup that resulted from that so after installing the uh, IDE hard drive the uh, CF card rather hard drive I ran setup and according to a blog, which I will link below, uh, said to choose 41 as your disk type. So I added the disk here in the setup program. And it's time to exit and save the changes. 
Nice, now we're back into the uh, DOS. That's number three. That was the uh, fast start disk. Alright, now we're going to partition our new hard drive. And after I partitioned it, it restarted. So checking the directory, it does show to have a C drive, but there's nothing on there. So I realized I had to format it. Wasn't quite sure of the syntax. <laughs> but anyway. There we go. Yeah, while this is doing this, uh, what happened at first there was I didn't have it on the proper disk. I still had it on the diagnostic disk. Had to go back to 3. So here we are selecting disk 7. This has the uh, configuration program that you run to configure the CF drive. Alright, we're selecting the diagnostic disk again. This was so I could... It's very difficult to see in the video, I apologize for that. I just wanted to inspect to see what it came up with for the hard drive and it did show that it had 249 megabytes. So, there we are checking the directory. Yeah, I went ahead and ran the directory on this disk and realized I needed the fast start, which is disk 3. There we go. Now I can run the uh, disk init. Yes, that's it. And disk init will install onto the fixed disk uh, DOS 3.3. Gives you plenty of warnings in case you didn't really want to do what you're about to do, that's for sure. So, disk init restarted the computer. Formatting C. Now, one of the questions I answered there while this is formatting um, was how many partitions you wanted it to do. So, it chose nine partitions. <laughs> Because it was the least amount that was available as choices, so there we go. Nine partitions, about 29 megs each. So I figured out after some trial and error that I had to pull the flash drive out if I was ever going to get it to boot to the hard drive. And so, with no flash drive in the GoTech, went through its check, identified the memory error. Continuing. Ah, there we go. DOS. Compact Personal Computer DOS version 3.31. How cool is that? Quick look in the directory. Realized that uh, all the cool stuff is in the DOS folder, so we're changing directory to that. Directory. A little clearer now, we can see better. Hey, let's give BASIC a try. BASIC A for advanced. IBM BASIC. 
Look at that. Let's write a quick program. Quick little loop. Fancy tab action. So as I'm sitting here editing this, I realize that I, I misspell something here. See if you can see the misspelling. <laughs> yeah, at this point I was over the moon at the fact that I could actually use this thing for something, do something with it. Look at that, Vern's Compact Portable 2. Or a facsimile thereof, because I didn't spell it right. But that's too many, because it went off the screen. So let's, let's make a little edit here. We'll check out the editing capabilities here. Nice. List it. It worked. And there it is. All right, well, next thing to try was putting some software with my PC onto the CF card, and plugging it back into the computer and seeing if we could actually, you know, use this thing for what it was meant to do, and that was to download and run some software. There we are, the old memory error. We're going to fix that eventually. Right. I did some, some editing of some stuff here, but I, I found Tapper, and I went ahead and downloaded that, and it, it went in its own directory, so we have to change into the Tapper directory. Yeah, I mean, it says start. That seemed like a logical thing, so I gave that a try. But it wasn't correct, so I realized I just need to type Tapper. So, here we go. Nice. So then we play a little tapper. Hey, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and finish this video out with this here. I want to thank you for hanging with me. I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We'll pick it up from here in the next one. Of course we still have to put the clothes back on this poor thing and on top of that we need to uh, modify the GoTech and fix the memory there's plenty to do left so you want to make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those upcoming episodes y'all thanks again for watching y'all take care